Hello, thank you for coming back. Today I am going to talk about um, the um, lesser known characteristics of attention deficit hyperactivity disorder. My name is Dr. Michael Masius. I am a clinical psychologist and the director of the North Shore Center a behavioral health center located both in Mequon, Wisconsin and Brookfield, Wisconsin. So what I'd like to talk about today is a term called executive functions. I'm going to define executive functions. This comes actually from the Center on the Developing Child at Harvard University. Um, bear with me, it's not a long definition, but executive function includes, or, or executive function rather, um, includes um, skills, cognitive skills, that are mental processes which enable us to plan, focus attention, remember instructions, and juggle multiple tasks successfully. Let me just sort of say that again. So we're talking about mental skills which originate from the brain and um, our mental processes we use which enable us to plan, focus attention, remember instructions, juggle multiple tasks successfully. Just as an air traffic control system at a busy airport safely manages the arrivals and departures of many aircraft on multiple runways, the brain needs this skill set to filter distractions, prioritize tasks, set and achieve goals, and control impulses. So executive functions. Um, they um, have come into the literature probably over the past maybe 15 years, let's say 30 years ago, 20 years ago, when people were assessing for ADHD, they might have been um, looking at one's executive functions but didn't necessarily know it. There wasn't a term for it, I don't believe, back then. So what do we see with kids who struggle with um, executive functions? And you see this in adults, too. Um, you're going to see um, struggles in one's working memory, you're going to see disorganization, mental rigidity, weak emotional regulation, and weak self-awareness. I could spend lots of time on each, but um, to make this um, video useful, I'll, 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 I'll go rather quickly and um, perhaps down the road talk more at length uh, about some or all of these. So working memory, what is working memory? Working memory, like all of these executive functions, emanates from your prefrontal cortex, which is the part of the brain right here at the front. It's the last part of the human brain, to human brain rather, to mature fully. The brain grows from bottom to top and back to front. And interestingly, your prefrontal cortex is right here. Working memory is the capacity for one to bring up and hold on to different pieces of information. It gets called up from your memory. Could be, <coughs> excuse me, your short-term memory or your long-term memory. And um, you juggle these different pieces of information to solve problems. So, for example, um, if I'm, um, I'm thinking, trying to think of a good example. If I'm um, uh, driving um, and trying to um, recollect a phone number, um, I'm, of course, using my brain to navigate, and at the same time, I'm searching my brain to come up with a phone number. Um, people still make phone calls these days, I believe, in order to um, make the call while driving. It's not a great example, but that is one example of working memory. We use, we use our working memory to solve problems all the time. Again, you're using your brain to call forth old information, new information, and even prospective information, information in the future to solve problems. So if your executive functions are weak, you're going to struggle with that. Secondly, um, disorganization, um, planfulness. Um, kids, for example, with weak executive functions have a very difficult time organizing themselves when they start their day. They also have a very difficult time organizing themselves throughout the day. Um, they really need planners um, in order to um, uh, in order to kind of remember um, what their homework is. Um, it, it just just being disorganized obviously is a is a critical problem for people both in the workforce or in the workplace um, and also at school. 
or plantfulness is also what it sounds like. We use our prefrontal cortex in order to figure out how to sequentially solve problems. Um, for example, kids who are asked to write papers or even write essays have to figure out what comes first, then what comes next, and then perhaps what comes last. If your prefrontal cortex is um, less developed than one would expect, given one's age, one is going to struggle with plantfulness. You can see um, we, we use plantfulness in many different sorts of situations throughout our lives each day. <coughs> Excuse me. Rigidity. Rigidity is when one has a very difficult time taking multiple perspectives in an effort to um, solve for example, social problems. So if I have one reality, and that happens to be the reality that I see through my lenses, um, but I cannot take another person's perspective into account, I can't think about it, I can't sort of uh, use my working memory to kind of relate it to the way in which I see things. If I'm being egocentric, then I'm having, then I'm, and then I'm, then I'm demonstrating cognitive rigidity. In kids with ADHD, who have underdeveloped prefrontal cortex, uh, under, underdeveloped prefrontal cortexes typically are rigid thinkers. A couple more things, just uh, interestingly, we use our prefrontal cortex um, to regulate our emotions. Kids who have underdeveloped prefrontal cortexes, which again you're likely to see in ADHD, have a very difficult time controlling or regulating their emotions. They seem to express their emotions without much of a capacity to think about what they're doing or whether the emotion sort of fits the situation. And then lastly, um, kids with weak or underdeveloped executive functions um, also um, have a difficult time self-monitoring. They do not do a good job of looking at themselves, monitoring themselves as they move through space throughout the day. Okay, that's a lot. Um, one's executive functions obviously comprise um, a set of very important skills. Again, these skills are based in your prefrontal cortex, the last part of your brain to develop, which seems to be um, more slowly moving, the prefrontal cortex that is, for kids diagnosed with ADHD. Like I said last time, kids with ADHD are going to struggle with inattention, impulsivity, and or self-control and or hyperactivity and because of where the, ADH, where the ADHD is located in the brain they're also likely to present with weaknesses in various executive functions. Please tune in again. I will talk about how all of this can manifest itself in academic situations, work situations for adults and young adults and social situations. Thank you. If you'd like to um, reach out to me to discuss ADHD or any other mental health topic. You can get to me through, I'm going to give you a different um, uh, a different way of getting me this time. Um, you can get to me at admin, A-D-M-I-N, at NorthShoreCenterLLC.com. Admin at NorthShoreCenter, one word, LLC.com. I hope you'll tune in again, and I hope you'll reach out to me. Thank you.